Mason Taylor, the tight end in motion. Daniels loads. Going deep. Man out there. His neighbors. He's got it. Touchdown, LSU. By the way, off the slot against the safety, Malachi Moore. Does it sound familiar? Tennessee game a year ago. LSU was going to do the Hey, everybody. This is Dynasty Gen's Rookie Profiler Series. We are on to the next guy, and we have an amazing guy joining us today. Um, one of the goats, one of the guys that I look to for all of my rookie profile scouting. Um, he is Mr. Matt Waldman over at Rookie Scouting Portfolio. You can find all his stuff pinned to his profile over there on X, Twitter, whatever you call it nowadays. Um, Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks so much for having me. I, You know what? When we started this series, I said, I got to get Matt Waldman on there, man. I was pretty pumped that you, you know, found some time in your schedule, but I know it's a busy time of the year for you. I know you're busy with that space bar. Um, you know, always. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love looking at your, your videos and everyone's like, dude, what is that space bar, man? Why does it make so much noise? And it's like, shut up. Nerd. That's, that's, that's because <laughs> That's because if I'm if I'm pounding that same face bar, I'm not pounding anybody in the face. So they're yeah, fortunate that know. you know that I'm only hitting the space bar hard. You're um, lucky. No, it, it is, it is. <laughs> There's always going to be people who are sensitive to things like that. But you know, I'm not. I'm not. My mortgage isn't paid on Twitter. My mortgage is paid through people buying the rookie scouting portfolio. So yep. you know, I'm just making little nice little Twitter videos that that I can make that are a minute or two and I'm, and you know, I break things down and I've always been kind of heavy handed when I type. So that's the way it goes. Yeah. And Hey, I love it. I love, I love what you do out there. And I love what you bring to the space too. You know, I appreciate if it. somebody, if somebody says anything about your video, you, you lay it right back on them, man. And I love that. You know, so. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, it's gotta be real. I mean, you know, I'm not yeah. trying to be mean, but when people are like, can, you know, can you do this or do that? And I'm like, you know, I get twelve dollars off of Twitter, you know. Yeah, that's not you know. I, yeah, I do this for a living, so come on now. I'm not doing this for you, you know. Yeah. On that level, you know. Yeah. If you, if anybody watching this or listening right now, and um, you haven't checked out his um, rookie scouting por portfolio, definitely go take a look. Go subscribe or go buy that. It's definitely well worth um, anything that you put into it financially because. I guess that Matt's one of the best to do it. And I don't think you can get anything close to that kind of content. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm excited to talk this guy today is we've been covering people that have been falling a little farther back in the, in the rookie um, rankings and stuff. Well, you know, these guys have to be talked about obviously. And this is Malik neighbors, um, Malik neighbors, junior out of LSU. He's coming in at, well, we'll we'll say six feet tall, two hundred pounds. We don't know where that's going to lie, but he's a big he's a bigger guy. He's got a good frame. He can definitely put on some weight there. Um, his twenty three stats were nothing short of phenomenal. Like he had eighty nine receptions for fifteen hundred and sixty nine yards and fourteen touchdowns. Um, when I when I think of Malik Neighbors, he's somebody that. Oh man, I was like, is he going to jump? Is he going to make that? that he's he was like on that teetering edge of like being an elite prospect for me and this year he just did it you know what i mean like he came out he had an amazing year um he showed you know he was always super athletic an athletic freak is how i'd um, pin him as but you know he was explosive you know um exceptional ball skills good tracking um very physical he can play on the outside play in the slot um his yak ability is way above average too. Um, there's a lot to like about Malik Neighbors, and I think you know we're pretty spoiled with this rookie class coming in when it comes to wide receivers. And you know, a lot of people are saying that Malik Neighbors would be the one in last year's and the year before, and maybe the year before, had he um, been in those classes. And you know, there's a good, you can make a, a pretty good argument for that if you really wanted to, but um, this is somebody that you, you handpicked every analyst I have on the show. I just ask them who they want to talk about. And, and you said Malik neighbors right off the bat. What do you like about Malik neighbors? And, and you know, what made you pick this guy? 
Yeah. Well, what made immediately? Yeah. What made me pick him immediately is that most people are talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. as if he's God. Um, and he's a terrific receiver. And he and there are a number of strong receivers in this draft class. Um, but I think Malik Neighbors is the best skill player um in this draft class period. End of story. And I know a lot of people don't think that. I know there are some people who are coming around to the idea that Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison are a close one too. And maybe it's not as far, maybe it's so close that maybe they don't have an argument about which one it is. But I think that Malik Neighbors is a good tier above any other receiver in this class. Um, and I don't know if I would say he's up there with some of the other guys in the past classes as far as the number one guy. Um, but I think that he's certainly in their tier. And what makes what I like about him is that you have to understand that Marvin Harrison Jr. may end up having a better career based on fit. And fit is an important thing, but we're not drafting for you know the Cleveland Browns or the New York Giants or the the Las Vegas Raiders. We're evaluating talent based on the potential of where they could wind up anywhere. And when you're doing that, you're looking for players who have the strongest set of skills um, and the widest range of skills to be able to provide the best chance of succeeding at a high level in any system, at least at, in a pre-draft evaluation report. So when I'm, you know, if I'm evaluating that way and the rookie scouting portfolio is one of the two most purchased draft guides for cross-checking purposes for the NFL in terms of independent draft guides out there, you know, I'm not looking scheme specific. I'm looking for the best set of skills. Well, neighbors is that guy because you you look at the fact that yes, you can put him outside at any of the, either flanker or or the X because of his speed, and he can win the ball in the air like an X. But he has the route running skill of a flanker. He has a complete route tree, and he his techniques are strong. But it's not just the technical application but it's the conceptual understanding of how to apply those techniques where you're understanding how to vary pace between patience and suddenness, how you're able to set up defenders in a way, like for instance, releases off the line of scrimmage. Very few receivers at this level um, entering the NFL are great against press coverage, but Malik Neighbors is gonna win press coverage right away in the NFL. And some of the things that he does that you don't normally see is not just that he has a strong library of footwork and hand counter techniques, and not just that he has pacing with how to apply them, which is also a level of nuance that a, a lot of guys don't have until they're about three, four, five years into the league. But it's also that he understands how to do it economically, where he's like standing still at the line of scrimmage instead of taking his first step with his footwork from a dynamic step forward, he'll sometimes use the step from a static position where he's standing still and he's just does the step in place of the first of the two steps he's going to apply for that footwork. That's something where he suddenly saves space and he gets defenders moving and he hasn't even taken a step in any direction yet. That's yeah. a savvy thing. So you're just talking about getting off the line. Then you're talking about the, all the different techniques that he has with his stem work, because the stem work, that ability from the release up to the break path, that's where you tell the story. And so when you're telling a story to a defender, you're, most defenders understand that they're going to move one way to sell me one direction and then get me in the other. But the best storytellers are give them a little more suspense because they move in one direction, get the defender guessing in the other, and then give the defender what they think they want and then they make that third move. And you have to be really efficient doing that because if it's more playground movement, then you're you're not timed up with your quarterback. And yeah. Malik Nader understands how to do those things. And then he's tough as hell at the catch point. He can get ping-ponged off defenders and win the ball. So you've got a, a timing route receiver who's going to match up as a what I call matchup player. Matchup players are the guys that on third and 15, they're going to get covered by the best corners on that team, uh, you know, in a pivotal situation where the defensive coordinator knows that they're getting the ball. Everybody on the field knows that the quarterback's going to throw that to Malik Neighbors, and he's going to win that route and get 15 yards with the top quarterback. Josh Allen to Stefan Diggs for years. 
you know, is a good example of that. Way back in the day, Roddy White with Matt Ryan was automatic like that. The you know players who do that, that's Malik Neighbors. Players who are schemed up, they're the guys that you throw jump balls to occasionally. But most of the time, it's like play action, throwbacks, second or third read guys that if they break open and you can buy time, you can get them the ball. Gabriel Davis is a perfect example of a of a guy who was overrated a bit because they thought he was a matchup player due to his production. But it was really he's a he's a schemed up player, and they're valuable, yeah. but they're not that guy. Neighbors is that guy, and that's why I like him so much, and why I feel like because the consensus say Marvin Harrison Jr. and he's a terrific player, but Malik Neighbors offers more in a variety of ways that they, that Harrison is still working towards. Um, so Neighbors, to me, is more like the next coming of Odell Beckham Jr. If you're going to talk about uh, a comparison, you know, a quick, ex- like you said, quick, explosive, someone who, you know, can play multiple positions and go up and win it, high twitch, and then all the techniques that go in with that. And, you know, when you put all that together, he's also physical at what he can do and handle it. And that was something that Odell Beckham could do in his prime. Yeah, I like I like that. I, I don't necessarily go for comps, but I do. Um, it's really hard not to do that. You know, I, I usually ask like people. It's something that I get a lot out there is like if you're going to put him in a tier with NFL players already, where would you throw him? Because like people are saying that Marvin Harrison Jr. is already like in that C.D. Lamb territory and that's not something i can get behind personally but where would you put neighbors say like in what kind of tier even just pre-drafts where would you have him sure and i'll just begin by saying that comparisons to me are more stylistic than by talent um yes and i usually give a range of players um so you know i'm about a month and a half away from producing the rookie scouting portfolio or publishing it. So I'm still, I still work on comps that comes after I do all the research. So, um, but that said, you know, I, I, am very reticent to put either of the players that we just mentioned here in the past minute, anywhere near CD lamb. Um, CD lamb is a fantastic elite wide receiver, um, who can play all three positions and I don't think Marvin Harrison can do that. I think Marvin Harrison is more of a um, Mike Williams, T. Higgins type of player that um, then he is a dominant A.J. Green type of player. I studied A.J. Green in college. Um, not a lot of people in this industry are old enough to have done that, um, <laughs> I will say. Um, so, I, you know, and I went to school at that school and watched A.J. Green and and so maybe there's a little bias with that, but I would say that AJ Green offers more, offered more as a route runner and more as a pass catcher, but that's a different story. So with Malik Neighbors, not to get too off track, would say that he's probably, if he's the top guy, he's a he's someone that I would put right now as a as probably a top 24 receiver at the bottom half, 15 to 24 as where you would you would say his upside is for this year with the opportunity for his upside to increase in value very quickly in year two to maybe top 15 level 12 to 15 and if everything goes right you could get that top you know top 12 ceiling of production kind of like cd lamb's career if you look at it from that perspective I would put him closer to CD Lamb than I would put anybody else. I love it. Yeah, I love hearing that. I, I would. I was called crazy for having Malik Neighbors and and uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. lockstep, and you know, um, I guess what I want to finish it off at is: say you're in a rookie draft right now, and we are talking about because you are the quarterback whisperer in my mind. I've I don't know if that carries over to other circles, but that's where you are when you're with me. Um, If you're looking at Caleb, I guess in some capacity, Marvin Harrison Jr., Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May, 
do you take neighbors ahead of any of those quarterbacks regarding like say Jaden Daniels or or Drake May? Would you take neighbors over those two guys in a super flex? It's it's a great draft? question. You know, in a super flex rookie draft, if you're a team that already has loaded quarterback talent, you take Malik Neighbors in a heartbeat. Um, if you well, I wouldn't say you take it in a heartbeat. In a super you you assess where basically the value is. And if you know that you can trade down and you probably will be able to trade down to get Malik neighbors, then you trade down in a heartbeat and get extra ca draft capital for the next year um, yeah. or two years from now. And you and you get Mal Malik neighbors because you're going to get a receiver. Most of the time, receivers do give you eight to 10 quality years. Maybe it's not the 12 to 15 that a top quarterback might give you, but the likelihood of the any of these quarterbacks becoming you know, studs is less than probably the wide receiver just historically. Um, so, you know, in that situation, that's what you do. If you are rebuilding, um, then, you know, there's the argument that you take Caleb Williams and, you, you know, and hope that maybe, or you trade back and get a nice um, prize for getting, taking Malik neighbors as you trade down. Um, yes. But it depends on how you, how you look at this, you know, and what, what you're at. I would say because quarterback is such a commodity in a super flex league that it doesn't hurt to stockpile. So if you have good depth at quarterback and you want to stockpile that, then, and Caleb Williams works out reasonably well, then you can trade your Lamar Jackson or you can trade your Josh Allen or whomever it is that you like and get whatever wide receiver you want from that, that quarterback. So I think there's two viable avenues with that. But honestly, those are the those are the top two picks, if you ask me. The the rest of the guys you mentioned, um, they could be good. Um, and certainly people like to go off and, and take those players because they prize a the quarterback in that situation. But for me, if it's not a really strong, I think there's only one really strong quarterback in this class. And the rest could be really good, but they could also they have low, much lower floors. Um, yeah. So at that point, I'd rather stockpile the wide receivers. And if I can get Malik Neighbors, if I can't get Caleb Williams, or I'm not sure I really need that, and I already have a strong receiving core, then yeah, maybe. And I can't trade down. Maybe I, I, the other alternative is yeah, take Malik Neighbors, and if you'll have, a, but I already have good receivers. Fine. Then you. Then you trade the guy as he's like 26, 27, whoever it is that you have on your team that's really good. And you get the running back you want or the quarterback you want. And I think that people don't do that enough. And and stockpiling is a great way to go. And, and it's a strategy that's worked for me for sure with getting quarterback. I've done that with quarterbacks. I've I've had at one time I've had a team that had Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, Patrick Mahomes, and Lamar Jackson all on one team. Um, with a one quarterback si system because I was in yeah. that middle area and I'm like, no one's going to, everyone keeps taking these other positions. So I wound up with Nick Chubb and Jonathan Taylor and Miles Garrett on my team because I could trade for whoever I freaking wanted, yeah. Yeah. you know, in that scenario. So you can do the same thing if you take a Malik Neighbors, if C Caleb Williams, you know, if you're the first or second on the board and you can't get Williams, take Neighbors gladly because he's going to probably be more impactful earlier. His capital is going to be higher later. And you're going to be able to get somebody that you feel good about out of it. I love it. All right, gang. That is Malik Neighbors, and this is Matt Waldman. So, Mr. Matt Waldman, if you like what you heard from him today, go buy the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Go out there and get it. It is pinned on his profile on X, I believe. Am I correct on that? Yeah, you can go to mattwaldman.com and just go right there. Just yeah. like the name says there on the on the screen. Yep, it's worth every penny. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you like what you heard today, that's definitely where you should go next. Um, we have Matt joining us again, and we are going to be talking Jonathan Brooks in a little bit. So stay tuned. <laughs>